Yo, what's good, basketball heads? It's your boy, Crush. Let's talk about the Lakers getting their butt kicked last night by the Chicago Bulls in LeBron's return. The team has been playing well. Austin Reeves been looking like a star. Anthony Davis finally got his groove back, started playing like an MVP. And the team was winning. They were winning games. If they won the game last night, they would have finally gotten to 500. LeBron came back and everything went downhill. I'm not trying to blame LeBron per se, but the proof is in the pudding. The team plays better without him at times. Half the times they play better without him because when he's not on the floor, the ball is moving. It's not stagnant. Players are not standing around watching LeBron dribble the ball. And it's a more free-flowing offense when LeBron is not in the game because there's not one person who's going to dominate the ball. It's just moving. The ball is just moving. Either they're going to put AD in the post, go through AD. Beyond that, the ball is constantly moving. You know, everybody's touching the ball. And I, I get it. You want LeBron to come back before the playoffs or the play-in, whichever. I get that. But his return really affected the team. And that's just how it's been uh, throughout most of the season. When LeBron is out, the team at times play better. When LeBron is in the game, for some reason, it's like the team is more, it's more tense. They're more, at, you know, the players in the team plays more loose when LeBron is not playing. Whenever he's out, injured, or whatever the, or whatever the situation may be, they play differently. And AD was doing his thing the past few games. Austin Reeves have been doing his thing, looking like a star. They could have possibly won this game tonight, which they should have won. LeBron came back, and they got the hell beat out of him. And then it's funny enough, after the loss, LeBron is saying he had a tore tendon in his foot. And the doctors told him he should have surgery, but he delayed surgery. You know, he, he put that off so he could make his return to play. I mean, you could respect it and clap it up, but is LeBron really injured or that's just another excuse? because? He thought he was going to come back. Oh, they're almost at 500. I'm going to come back now, surprisingly. And once we get to 500, everybody's going to praise me. And, you know, Skip and Shannon is going to be on the show. Oh, LeBron. And it didn't turn out that way. So LeBron came back, messed up the entire chemistry of the team. They got their butts whooped. And they're in a position now that they could fall out of the plane. One more loss, and they could be out of the plane looking in. It's that close. They should have sat LeBron out and just let the team play this game last night and get to 500. I think they would have been better without LeBron. And what's even worse, LeBron took more shots than AD. How are you coming off injury and you take more shots than AD? Think about that. LeBron took more shots than AD. And that's my issue with Anthony Davis. You are a superstar, man. You are the best player on the team. I don't care if LeBron fans want to say it's LeBron. AD is the best Laker, period. So why are you taking only, why are you taking less than 10 shots? You don't need someone to tell you to shoot the ball. Come on, man. Like, it's a mental thing. AD is just not an alpha player. That's all it is. Anthony Davis is not an alpha player because anyone who's an alpha player, they're going to get their shots. They don't need you to tell them to shoot the ball. But for some reason, you'll have these games where LeBron gets way more shots than AD. The role players takes more shots than AD. And AD's barely shooting the ball. Every time LeBron comes back from injury, the entire blueprint of how to win gets thrown out the window. Oh, LeBron is back. Prior to LeBron returning, we played through AD. Oh, now LeBron is back. Throw it all out the window. For some reason, Darvin Ham always do this. LeBron returns, and instead of sticking to the blueprint and what have been working, he throws it all out the window to appease LeBron. Let's accommodate LeBron. He's back. The king is here and ruined the entire situation. The team was rolling. They were on their way to get into 500, and that got ruined because LeBron came back and killed the entire chemistry. LeBron came back and killed the entire chemistry. I'm not blaming him per se, but the team at times just plays better without him. The team at times plays better without LeBron because the ball is moving. 
The ball is being shared. It's moving. You could play through AD. At times, Austin Reeve has the ball in his hand, and you know he's going to pass it. He's not going to hold the ball. LeBron came back, tried to make his grand entrance, and they lost. And last night game just looked like they had no energy. I don't know what happened. It's like LeBron return sucked the energy out of the team. They had no energy. You could see the energy wasn't there. The entire night, the team looked lethargic, a step slow. AD energy wasn't there. He wasn't dominant. He wasn't trying to be assertive. Like, what the heck happened? And this is all as soon as LeBron returned. As soon as LeBron returned from injury. Prior to LeBron coming back, the team was rolling. AD's balling. Austin Reeves is balling. The entire team is rolling. They had a good thing going. And Darvin Ham once again messed that up because he's trying to accommodate LeBron. If a player is coming off injury, it doesn't matter his status, whether, he, whether he's a superstar or star, it doesn't matter. When somebody's coming off injury, you got to slowly ease him into the game. You don't let this guy come in and dominate the ball, dominate the game, and you go away from the blueprint. What I've been working for the entire, that entire stretch of LeBron being out, Darvin Ham went away from that blueprint. I guess he's afraid of LeBron. He's trying to appease LeBron. We don't want to upset LeBron. Even though he's coming off the bench, he's going to still get his minutes, whatever the case may be. And certain players didn't even play the game. And players like Rui Hachimura didn't even play. You know, they sat him out last night's game and the Lakers got their butts whooped. The Lakers got their butt whooped. Patrick Beverly did exactly what he said he was going to do. He said he was going to knock the Lakers out the playoff. And so far, he's 1-0. and And they play again, like, a few days coming up. The Lakers play the Bulls again. And if Beverly win that game also, that's going to be tough. But yeah, man, I, I felt like Darvin Ham could have did some things differently. They should have went through AD, played through AD as they've been doing this entire stretch since LeBron's been out. And as soon as LeBron comes back, let's blow it all up. Let's blow up all the plan, the blueprint, everything we have been doing. Let's blow it up. And that's the issue, man. The team always revolves around LeBron. Instead of LeBron coming back, slipstreaming himself into the team, and, you know, they got to adjust the entire system around LeBron. Why? The man just got back from injury, and we got to tear up the blueprint, what's been working with AD and Reeve, throw it in the garbage to accommodate LeBron and end up losing the game. It makes no sense, man, but this is the LeBron effect. This is the LeBron effect. Whenever LeBron is on the court, players, they tense up, man. They, they're not loose. And AD don't play the same. If you notice that, whenever LeBron is on the court, AD is less dominant. He doesn't play the same. It's like he defers or something. He defers, you know, it's LeBron. I don't, I don't know if he's afraid of LeBron, but he defers. He just, he's like happy-go-lucky. I'll, I'll take what I could get. If I get five shots, so be it. By now, we know AD is not a number one option. But even so, he, he is the number one option for the Lakers. He's not a number one option because of mentality. He has the talent, we know that, but mentality-wise, he's not. But he is still the number one option on the Lakers. And whenever LeBron is on the court with AD, he defers. He always defers. So if LeBron is on the court, AD defers to the point he barely takes shots. He barely shoots the ball. AD will go an entire game shooting less than 10 shots because LeBron is on the court. When LeBron is not there, oh, it's a different animal. And I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, why is it like that? Shouldn't you feel more confident and be more dominant when LeBron is there? Oh, I got my wingman. Let's go. But whenever LeBron is on the court, most of the time, I mean, AD regress. He plays less aggressive. He seems disengaged. I don't know what's wrong with AD. The LeBron effect, man. Whenever LeBron is on the court, the team plays differently. The offense is not as loose because he's too ball dominant. And it is what it is. But as always, I'll holla. As always, we just talking basketball. Hit the subscribe button. Like, comment, share. Holla at your boy.
It's all about the game and how you play it. It's all about the game. I'ma say it. It's all about the game.